Hey everybody, I'm here with Brooks again. Hello. And we are going to talk about 3.1, which uh, just came out a few weeks ago, very shortly after my previous video. Yeah, and, I'm uh, kind of surprised. Well, um, I was going to say one of the benefits of uh, having an online rule book is you can update it over a couple of days and get community feedback and like build the best possible rule book, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I really like about OPR. Yeah. You don't got to buy like a whole bunch of supplements, a bunch of rules, like physical copies of rules that are going to be going to be out of date. Yeah. It, and it definitely shows they're listening to people who play. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to go over the changes that they made after the previous video that I did. We're not going to go into any of the advanced rules, just going through the stuff that's in the beginner's guide, which is um, like the expanded core rules, basically. Um, first, I wanted to talk about a few things we missed in the last video. First, I want to clarify the rending rule is two separate effects. I don't think I made that clear in the last video. I, I may have been misreading it myself. It is one sentence. Yeah, I can see why people would be um, unsure if it's one way or the other. But yeah, targets get minus one to regeneration rolls. And that's just across the board, regardless of like uh, what the hit roll is. Yeah, as long as you have rending, your target gets minus one to regen. Yeah, which is nice. Yeah. In addition to that, you get the AP4 if you get a six to hit, just like it was before. And that is an unmodified result of six. Yep. Which is important. Another thing I did not mention was line of sight. Um, they have a few options for that now. I don't know if you saw that or not. I did not. Yeah, um, they added two new options for that. So you have basic line of sight, and then you have top-down line of sight. I'll just read it. Before the game begins, players must assign a height value to all units and terrain. As a guideline, height can be defined as a value of X plus 1, where X is the actual height of the physical item. So they have a couple examples for like swarms, that's height 1, infantry, mm -hmm. artillery, height 2, uh, cavalry, chariots, large infantry, height 3, etc., etc. Okay. Yeah. And then do you, you, I assume you assign that to terrain as well? Yeah. So then when you're standing on top of terrain, units add the height to their own height. Okay. Yeah. Just to kind of like um, take take some of the uncertainty out, I guess, if you're having issues with regular line of sight. This is very good. I like this a lot. So this is actually how they do it in Conquest. Yeah, I was going to I was going to say I, I know this one and the other one, which we'll talk about. Yeah, I've, I have a feeling that they're kind of doing that because they're catering to people who are coming over from different games and different rule sets. Well, I like it just because it takes the uh, I, I don't know if wishy washy is the right word, but it's like, I think I can see it. Well, no, you can't see it. Well, my guy's height one and he's trying to see through a height two, so he just can't see. Yeah, yeah, I, I could definitely see people um, using that and, mm -hmm. and enjoying it. So you get to pick which one of these you're using or these? Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Let me finish reading it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, to, to <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> well, you're, you're right, though. To determine line of sight, you simply draw a straight line from uh, the point of the model's base to any point in the target's base. And if, it, if the line doesn't pass through any obstacles or units of the same height or higher than both models, then the model has line of sight. And then they have a, a volumetric line of sight. It assigns like an inch height based off of base size. 25 millimeters or one inch. 32 are 1.25, 40 are 1.5 inches, and then uh, yeah, it goes so on and so forth. Yeah, that one seems overly complicated. Uh, that's how I, that's kind of <laughs> how I feel about both of them, but yeah, that one especially. The, like the <laughs> top down is fine because yeah. it's just it's a solid number. If you're yeah. higher than me, I can't see through it. If you're lower, I can see over it. But this one's like the 1.25 and 1.5 are weird, but I get why they did it because it's actually not that much of a jump in up in size for the yeah. bases. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be willing to try it out. I still prefer basic line of sight. Yeah, and that's how personally. it was before. And I think that's how most people are still going to play it. Yeah, we don't really get into arguments over that stuff yeah. very often. <laughs> And if we do, we resolve it pretty quick. So yeah, and I don't remember if you did say this or not, but it does say in the rule that you, in the rules that you pick one of these to use. Are you asking me or telling me? <laughs> I, I found it in the rule book. I am okay. <laughs> Just for anybody who's listening, <laughs> it's an option. Gives yeah. you an option. I think the like top down makes more sense in a fantasy or square based game. Yeah, I could see that. Where every, like squads are closer together and everything. Mm -hmm. It's it's really cool that you have the option now. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a good thing. Like I said, it'll help people coming from other game systems if they want to use that. Yeah, yeah. 
Sorry, I'm um, laughing because in the volumetric it says they recommend building a paper cylinder for each base. <laughs> place her on the models to check <laughs> yeah, that's one way to do it that's that's some dedication yeah um i wanted to talk about elevated terrain that's yep. another thing that i think um they had in there but we didn't really talk about it i, I think they mostly just clarified like how it works a little bit more mm -hmm. okay let me bring it up here yeah so terrain that is over three inches tall and any gaps over one inch wide count as elevated terrain and are impassable so I, I would assume that that means like if you have like a series of one inch rocks that you're climbing up you can still do that even if like at the end they're over three inches tall i would assume that they're just talking about like a sheer three inch like cliff, yeah cliff if it face. was just yeah exactly if it was just a cliff face up mm -hmm. or down yeah which uh it, it makes sense yeah for some reason the one inch wide part is bugging me so if it's over one inch wide they just can't go over it then like, yeah, if it's over one inch wide, you'd either have to, like, make the movement down and up again. Unless it's, like, a gap that's deeper than three inches, then you wouldn't even be able to do that. I guess there's not too many boards where you have a one inch gap that goes into nothing. Unless you yeah. have, like, a crater that you're playing with on your mat or something. Yeah, that's a lot of um, foam rocks. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about, like, just in the middle of a, field, a battlefield, just having a giant crevice. And then they'd be like, oh, well, nobody can walk over this. So, <laughs> yeah, I feel like it makes a lot of sense if it's like a building beside a building or something like that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be uh, utilizing that for my boards. Yeah, I think the three inch mark is important to look at and keep in mind when you're making terrain for this. Because I know like your rocks and stuff are like one and a half inches or two inches. They're two. Yeah, one and two. I think prior to this, you could move up over anything up to three inches and it wouldn't count towards your movement speed or your, your total movement. But now you have to measure vertical distances. Yeah. Yeah. Like any vertical distance. And that's yeah. that's what that's what I get from that. Usually when like most of the most of the time I'm moving into a vertical terrain, I'm charging in or moving in and I'm not using my full movement anyway. So very true. In, in most of the situations I can think of where I've done it. Yeah. But now if you have Strider, that's where it gets a little confusing, yep, I guess. Yeah, you just ignore everything. I actually, um, I stopped calling those those flat rocks um, mm -hmm. difficult terrain. I haven't been doing that. I, I call the garbage piles difficult terrain. Which makes sense because it'd be hard to walk through. So Strider, yeah, Strider only ex ignores difficult. So you would still have to measure your vertical distance movements. It's more fair that way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember if that's how we did it or not. But... With Strider measuring yeah. vertical distance? I'm pretty sure we did. I feel like it's changed over time. That was a long time ago. I'd have to go back and see. And even then, like I said, like we rarely make like the full movement. So, And for, for a while there, I was using that six inch limit. So like even if you were measuring the vertical distance, like you wouldn't even be moving your full distance. Yeah. I think everything else pretty much um, works the same way. They added blocking terrain i don't think that was in there before but that works like you would expect it to blocks line of sight was that in there before i don't remember that i don't think it was no that's just for people who don't want to use uh basic line of sight <laughs> okay on to the new to 3.1 rules all right all right so um the wording was changed a bit for uh, furious and relentless. They just wanted to clarify that the additional hits from those rules don't count as sixes for special rules so like they don't trigger rending for example okay yeah any anything where it would say if you roll a six then that wouldn't it wouldn't count towards that yeah i yeah. guess i could see where you would get confused makes a lot of sense yeah yeah it's it, just good good for clarity yep yeah makes things clear and uh helps fix broken combos yep poison now also gives a minus one to regen rolls oh yeah uh, they're definitely uh trying to knock down regeneration a little bit yeah, well, I think um, a lot of people were like kind of underwhelmed by what Poison did, uh, rerolling okay. rerolling sixes to block hits. Yeah, I know we kind of weren't that impressed with it. Yeah, um, yeah. but I don't know. Thinking about it a little bit more, I feel like like with most things, it's very situational, and it could definitely have a, a big impact. It makes sense, kind of lore wise too, because lightly armored things that are like defense five yeah you're re-rolling 50 percent of your successes then yeah so and that's poison would affect more lightly armored things than 
more heavily. So it makes sense. Yeah. And then the minus one to regen again. It's it's a good add. It gives it more utility. Oh, and it will give you more target options with poison weapons, too. You can target a big beast with regeneration, but that has defense three, and you still have a benefit to doing that. Yeah, it gives you more options for sure. Next, counter. I think I told you about this. So yeah, counter now, um, It's it still gives you the strike first. Mm -hmm. But now the charging unit gets minus one total impact attacks per model with this rule. Yeah, very good. Impact was very strong. I, I really like that because it kind of gives it like a, like it deteriorates. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like in other games when um there's like a larger unit and it has like different profiles as it gets more damage. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really like that. I'm excited to try it out. Yeah. Um. Have they released any new army rules yet? Well, because I, I only ask because I'm, I'm curious to see how many things get counter. Yeah, they've done. Like, I feel like most of the armies are like 90, if not 95 percent there. Yeah. Um. So you yeah. you could definitely look through them. I'm sure they've added it in a lot. Because mm -hmm. imp impact is pretty prevalent across all of the armies. Like at least something gets it. Yeah, I've been looking through uh, a couple uh, new armies and some of the old ones that I have, and uh, mm -hmm. they've definitely made a lot of changes. Okay. A lot. Like change demons are completely different now, almost. Well, that's good. They needed that. Yeah, they're definitely a lot more viable now. Awesome. Yeah. I'm just excited to try out my skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got another group I'm painting up with spears. Oh, very nice. Um, next would be force organization. It removed uh, the limits to casters. They made it easier to make a list, basically. So you can, there's no limit on the amount of spell casters you can have. Yeah. Because yeah, my armies didn't use a whole lot of uh, casters, so having like a limit to the heroes and the um, the casters wasn't an issue to me. But um, I guess if you do want to run like a heavy caster list, that does kind of like. Do you remember what the limit was before? It depends, like what size list you are building. Okay. I think the the default, like on the high end, when you look at um, Grimdark, is two thousand points, and I yeah. Think... It's 1,500 for Fantasy and 2,000 for Grimdark. Mm -hmm. And it's four heroes for both at, at those okay. levels. So all four of them now could be a caster, though. Yeah, they could. But okay. you can you can have casters that aren't heroes as well. Um, yeah, yeah, there, there are yeah. options to add casters to non-hero units. You could run yeah. as, as many as you want, I guess, as, as, as long as you have the points for it. Mm-hmm. Which, um, I mean, they must be pretty confident that that's not going to be, like, really overpowered. Yeah. I mean, if you're putting the points into it, I think it, it would probably be pretty balanced, but I haven't tested it out yet. Yeah. I mean, I know this is going to change, but, like, the Hive Lord is currently 60 points to make it a wizard. Yeah. Yeah, you're paying, the, paying points for it, so. It's 20 points per level of caster. That's what it looks like it is currently. Yeah. I'll be interested to see if people start running like caster heavy lists, if they are stronger or weaker, or if it is still pretty balanced. It'll probably be very army dependent. Yeah. If, you're, if your army has access to good spells, you want to cast a lot of them. Yeah. Eventually, I want to put together a change demon list, and I know that's going to be pretty heavy on the casters. I'm going to try and make it pretty heavy, yeah. but it's not going to be like all casters. You can add a caster to the um, the basic warriors now for them. Oh, okay. We could definitely do a whole video on like that army. Yeah. Well, we had talked about that doing like an army by army little overview. Yeah. Um, I'll yeah. get to that later. But yeah, I'm down. <laughs> uh, what else here? Uh, they clarified that transports require a move action to disembark, and that uh, units must stay within the six inches when disembarking. Um, I'm actually working on uh, some dwarves, and I'm mm -hmm. gonna I'm gonna use the transport. I really like those models. Yeah, I'm I'm enjoying them so far. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of curious to see what the uh, dwarf terrain looks like, assuming they do terrain. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for that. Oh, for fantasy, they clarified that musicians give plus one move to the actions, which is now oh, okay. Yeah, because it was uh, I think it was plus one to morale previously. This, okay. The same as the banner. They both did the yeah. same thing, I believe. Oh, well, that's, I mean, more movement is always more better. Yeah. Traditionally, musicians made people march better. So Yeah, there you go. Makes makes sense. It does make sense. I don't know 
how much I see myself using it, but maybe for certain things, it could definitely say like your um, your war demons mm-hmm. that you want to get the charge off and you want to make sure you're not the one being charged. It, it would be nice to have something like that. Yeah. Give you a little bit more control over the situation. But it only gives you plus one to your movement, not plus one to your charge. It's move to actions. That's that's what they oh. uh, they clarified. Oh, okay. I think what they mean is like it doesn't count towards the consolidation. Yeah, yeah. Or the um, quote unquote pile in. Yeah, if you're advancing or rushing or charging, I would assume you get that. Yeah, it is pretty nice. Yeah. Like I said, for for an army like the War Demons that want to get that charge off. Yeah, I would give every single unit a little horn guy or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so charging is under the movement actions. Well, it's just it's an action, so yep. it's not necessarily a movement action, but like there's there's four actions: hold, advance, charge, rush. Yeah, yeah. The only one it would count towards is hold because you're not moving. You could hold one inch more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe you can. You can hold, and then you can move one inch mm-hmm. <laughs> and still hold. <laughs> I don't think it would work like that. That's my next question for him. I think you're just going to confuse people. Yeah, I think that's uh, it's pretty much it. Like, they're not a ton of changes to the main rules, just some some clarifications. Some... Yeah, like I said at the beginning, they're clearly listening to what people have issues with, and they're changing things quickly. Yeah. So, that's good. Yeah, and uh, you can definitely tell they're they're trying to balance the game more overall yeah i've looked through a few of the factions and it definitely seems like um, they don't seem as unbalanced i'm looking forward to playing a few more games and just kind of seeing how different uh, factions play now Mm -hmm. yeah hopefully there's more balance across all of them pretty much it for that um i think we're we're planning on doing some faction overviews here in the future yep i am definitely i'm definitely down for that not sure when it's going to start. I don't think it's going to be like a Patreon exclusive thing. I wanted to talk about uh, one thing we're planning on doing here is um, what we call the post-mortem. And that's going to be a little discussion after the battle reports. Kind of talking about um, what we did right, what we did wrong. We generally have that talk after all of our games, but now we're just going to record it. <laughs> yep. People like to justify like if they know they uh, made mistakes. I filmed one with John and we were talking about um, some of the units and like how we like using them or like this unit should be used this way. I I wish I would have used this unit this way, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't really like how this unit performs. Maybe I'll take something else next time. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, I should have gone up this flank instead of that one. Yeah. Charged here. Yep. And like I said, we generally always talk about that at the end of our games anyway. So yeah. um, If anyone has anything that they would like to see in addition to that um, just let me know in the comments below Um, we're definitely um, open to trying different formats with that i don't think i'm going to go too far into the lore for like the armies and um, that is going to be a patreon exclusive thing so you can get access to that and um it's just gonna it's gonna take some time to see what works what doesn't work what people respond to but yeah that's that 